Hi everyone, welcome to another Zoo Creates. I'm Tegan and this is Keisha with me today. Hi guys. Today for our craft, we're gonna use toilet paper rolls to make our own mm. binoculars. So binoculars are really useful for spotting animals when we're outside in nature. Mm. So when, when we're here in Iowa, they might be really good if you're trying to spot some birds in the trees. Yeah. Uh, but maybe if you were in Africa, you would want to keep some distance from some of those animals like the lions, right? And so those binoculars are really helpful to observe those animals in the wild from afar. So to start, everybody's going to need two toilet paper rolls. So make sure you have two, which hopefully everybody's got a lot of those nowadays. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start by securing them together, and that gives us the binocular shape. So I'm going to use the stapler first, Keisha. Okay. And I'm going to staple them together. Now, if you don't have a stapler, tape works as well. Or if you need to use glue, you might just have um, some wait time while they dry, gluing them together. Could you maybe use like a hole punch and some string too? Definitely, okay. and you'll see we're gonna use that technique here in a second to make that a necklace part of it. So I'm gonna use the hole puncher and I'm gonna go on the outside to make some holes. Now, if you don't have a hole puncher at home, you can also just use the pointy part of the scissors or maybe a um, paper clip or a nail and poke, poke yourself a hole. Maybe I'll try using my scissors to show everybody how we yeah, can do that. Yeah, that sounds great. And once you have those holes in there, that's where we're gonna tie our string. So you'll want a piece of yarn, or if you need to, cut like a thin strip of fabric, something that you can make a necklace out of, or maybe you already have a necklace that you can mm. secure on there. So I'm just gonna tie on either side, just like so. Now, we're just doing black string, but if you've got some other colors, that'll add to your beauty of your binoculars. <laughs> I'm gonna trim off the excess, like that. I'm gonna go on the other side. So this is really good for those fine motor skills, being able to thread it through like that. I think I'm going to leave right. my extra. Leave it on there? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So there's the binoculars. They're made, but we want to decorate them. So here we've got some markers or crayons. You can draw on them. Or maybe if you have some stickers. Um, I've grabbed out so we have some glitter glue. You could paint on there. Mm. Um, can also glue other things on there. So like I've got some tissue paper pieces that you could glue or some gems. Um, really anything that you have at home that might make it look colorful and fun. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna use some markers. Ooh. What is your theme gonna be? Um, I think I'm going to put stripes and polka dots on stripes there. Stripes and polka dots. Well, I'm gonna put a lot of animals because I like animals. Especially snakes. Ooh. I think they're kind of fun. They if I can get this cool. one off. Now, Keisha, do we have snakes here in Iowa? We do. We have a lot of snakes in Iowa. Um, and most of them are going to be our constrictors. So those ones that don't have any venom or anything like that. But we do have some that kind of pretend like they're a little bit of a venomous snake. Um, so we have, uh, what are they called? Fox snakes and um, bull snakes. They both actually have the ability to mimic that rattling sound with their tail. So they'll take the end of their tail and kind of um, vibrate it on something that's hard like a woodier glass or even a wall or something like that and it'll kind of make that rattlesnake sound but they don't have any venom so they're harmless in that way okay yeah 
why don't we see them very often? Oh yeah, because snakes are very, very good at camouflaging with the world around them. Um, snakes don't have any arms or legs, so they have to spend a lot of their time on the ground, even though they can climb very, very well for not having um, those arms and legs, but they like to slither on the ground a little bit more. And when you're on the ground and you're kind of smaller or closer to the ground, uh, you need a little bit more protection, and that oh. camouflage helps them with that protection, so it's hard for us to kind of see where they're at. Um, but it is kind of fun going out and searching to see what kind of animals you can find that are camouflaged. Right. So if we were to go looking for snakes, mm -hmm. where might we find them? So you could find snakes in our cornfields. Um, that's always a good place. Uh, cornfields hold a lot of their food, so they love to eat like um, rodents and smaller mammals and birds. And um, the Corn and soybeans actually gives those smaller mammals um, something to eat. So the snakes know that, so they're gonna follow them into those areas, so you can maybe find them in there. Or even like foresty areas, um, some snakes can swim really well too, so sometimes you can see them on the water. Okay. Yeah. Cool, so if we're looking for an animal, we kind of have to think like the animal, right? Yes. Like what they would eat and mm -hmm. where they like to live um, in order to be able to find them. Yes, that is a good thing to remember when you're going and looking for animals to kind of see and spot uh, where they might be is um, the best place is always to think about what the animal eats first. An animal's gonna spend most of their time where their food is. So right. if that the animal- That makes sense. Yeah. I spend a lot of time in my kitchen. Exactly. <laughs> so if a lot of animals, um, or if a certain type of animal you're looking for eats something in the trees, maybe look in the trees. Um, if an animal eats something near the water, check near the water. That makes sense. So what are some good animals that we could be looking for this time of year, in the spring? Ooh, in the spring. So um, we see them quite often, usually, but rabbits are always a good one in the spring. Um, those guys are something we call crepuscular, which means they're awake during, well, most active during dusk and dawn. So if you get up really early in the morning, right as that sun's coming up, you're gonna be able to see a lot more rabbits than you normally would, or when the sun's just going down. That's when they're gonna come out the most um, and then you can also get some really cool like frogs and things near the pond you'll hear a lot more croaking um, this time of the year when okay. they're starting to come out a little bit more too cool all right how's it coming all right I think oh, I'm I like done. the dots on yours they're Thanks. glittery Ooh, and they're so fancy I'm gonna put them on I'm not because mine has blue on them Oh no! <laughs> My necklace came off. I'm gonna have to retie them. <laughs> They're working pretty good. All right. Well, mm -hmm. did you bring an animal visitor for us today? I think I did bring an animal visitor. It might take me just a second to okay. get her out, but um, I'll oh. go ahead and do that now. Well, while Keisha is getting our animal visitor out, I just wanted to remind everybody to put your comments and questions below the video. We will be checking those out, and we would love to see any pictures of your crafts that you're making and get back to you on those. So I'm very curious to see what she might have brought us yeah. today. I hope it's one of those things we can find here in Iowa. Ooh, maybe. We'll have to see. All right. Mm. So we'll get on. It's front. not very noisy. Nope, not noisy at all. Okay, so this is Snickers, and she is a ball python. Cool. Yes. Oh my gosh, she looks so pretty. She's she, got a lot of markings on her. She does. She has very cool markings on her body that help her to camouflage in the wild, too. Now, I know you talked about hopefully seeing something we see in Iowa. Well, the only place in Iowa you might see this is actually in somebody's home. <laughs> so ball pythons are a very common snake to have as pets. Um, um, but I usually don't recommend um, reptiles as pets to just anybody. Um, it really kind of depends on your lifestyle and um, how much time you have to take care of an animal and how much money you have too. It can get kind of inexpensive um, caring for certain types of animals. So um, reptiles are just not one that I normally rec recommend. Um, but I'll 
as far as out in the wild, you would not find Snickers. Um, she is actually native to Africa. Wow, okay. Yeah. Where would she like to hang out in Africa? Yeah, that's a great question. So she actually prefers to um, live in places that are a little bit more grassy, so like the savanna areas, but also um, some woody areas as well. So um, probably not something like a thick forest, but something that has some sort of um, woodier vegetation and things like that. She would she would be spending a lot of her time there. Okay, so maybe some of the browns, the dark browns are so she could blend into trees. Yeah. And the light browns start to blend in with grasses. Yes, so um, she is not actually the natural color you would find out in Africa. She actually has something we call a different morph um, than our natural looking ball pythons. Um, we do have a ball python here. Her name is Nala and she is more of that natural look. Um, where Snickers has all of this light tan color, um, it would actually be a, like a slightly darker brown. Um, so they would blend in more with those um, grasses, those dark grasses in like the mud as well too. Okay. Yeah. Now I see she keeps putting her tongue out. Why is she doing that? Yeah, so Snickers is very young and she's very curious. So um, she is actually using her tongue to smell. Wow. Yeah, I know that kind of sounds a little silly because um, we use our nose to smell. But her tongue actually um, has saliva on it, um, like her nose has that mucus. And that actually allows um, her to grab those particles like her mucus in her nose does and hold on to them. And then when she pulls her tongue back in, she actually has an organ in her mouth called a Jacobson's organ. Oh, yes. okay. And that takes the, I'm sorry, I didn't want her to fall there. That takes her, um, Take those particles and send signals right to her brain. That that organ does that for her. Okay. Yeah. Now she looks really shiny. Does she feel slimy? No, she's not slimy. She is very dry, um, and that is good for animals with scales. Um, they're just very shiny, so they just look really, really cool, and that's why it gets that kind of like a glisten, and that also shows that she's pretty healthy too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. I see that she's covered in scales, and that's mm -hmm. why she looks so shiny. Uh, what kind of animal is she if she has scales? If she has scales, so um, we have skin that's a little bit more soft, and she just has um, scales that are a little bit more rough because she likes to um, go on the ground. And when you kind of rub yourself on the ground, your skin gets irritated. But with scales, it doesn't. So animals with scales, we call those reptiles. Okay, yeah. so Snickers is a reptile. Yeah, a very awesome. sweet reptile at that. <laughs> yes, she is. She looks so curious. She is. Well, that's all we have for you guys today. Like I said, uh, please give any questions or comments below, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, thanks for having me, Tegan. Thanks for coming. Bye, Bye. guys.